Hello everyone, and welcome to Planet Linux. I'm glad that you found this video, which will likely be a bit shorter than those you're typically accustomed to on this channel, but I hope you enjoy it nonetheless. I'm also hoping that this will be a very helpful video for those of you that uh, either have some sort of vision loss, uh, a visual impairment like myself, or your vision just isn't as good as it used to be. As today we're taking a look at visual accessibility features in Linux Mint, as well as uh, other GNOME-based distributions. I believe that KDE also has many of these features as well, though they're in different places in the system settings. And before we get started, I will note that yes, I'm using the Mint Y darker theme with the Mint X icons. So before anyone comments on that, yes, I'm aware of it, and it's my personal preference, so you're just going to have to deal with it. Um, now that we're in system settings, this is actually right where we need to be to access our visual accessibility features. As we'll go to the accessibility button here, you can also search for this under the Mint menu by typing accessibility. If I can type, I cannot type. Um, or just typing zoom, which will also take you there. Once in the accessibility page, make sure you're on the visual tab, and here we have a plethora of features and settings for visual aids and accessibility features. The first of which is high contrast. Enabling this will uh, turn on the high contrast GTK window theming, which of course affects the uh, elements within Windows, as well as many of the icons on the system, such as those on the desktop and within the file manager, using the high contrast settings. This is great if you um, are someone that needs a higher contrast visibility in order to see your computer. Now there is a slight bug with this, at least on my system. When I turn this back off, for whatever reason it switches me back to the default Mint X theme. So I'm going to change this back to how I had it a moment ago. Continuing under accessibility, we next have large text. And I actually have this enabled right now for the purposes of this video. In case some of you are watching this on smaller screens, it just makes it a bit easier to see. Um, this can be turned off here as well, and you can see the difference between the regular and the large text. If you're someone that doesn't need a full screen magnifier uh, or zoom features, but you just want text overall to be a bit larger across the interface, it's a nice quick toggle. Uh, to turn that on. Thirdly, we have the screen reader, and this turned on will make the computer uh, talk to you and read read the elements on the screen through text-to-speech voicing or braille output if you have a braille display connected, and allows the user with little or no vision to navigate and use the computer uh, by using keyboard shortcuts and receiving voice or braille feedback. I believe if I turn this on, not sure if you can hear that, but um, yeah, it's not going to talk to me now. Uh, so we got the screen reader. Next up under desktop, no, now what? Now it talks to me. Okay. Um, next under desktop zoom, this is the meat of what I really want to take a look at here. We have Enable Zoom. This will probably be off by default, but once turned on, we have numerous options, the first being the magnification level. You can adjust this here, though with keyboard shortcuts and mouse commands, you really don't have to use this combo bo or this uh, spin box to adjust the magnification. And below this, we have the uh, mouse wheel mo modifier key, which allows you to hold down chosen key and scroll with the mouse wheel or gesture scrolling on your trackpad to quickly adjust the zoom level. We have scrolled at screen edges and good luck figuring out what this does. You may be able to, but I was not. I've 
had this turned on and off and used different zoom modes and couldn't figure out a difference. So if you can figure out the purpose of this option, then you've done a better job than me. We then have mouse tracking mode, which allows you to choose when you move the mouse around zoomed in, how it uh, behaves. Now, for whatever reason, figures this works before I started recording. For whatever reason, this isn't changing what it, the actual behavior. It's using the cursor pushes contents around, which means when my cursor gets to the edge of the display area and I keep moving it in that direction, it just pushes the viewing area in that direction. Other options here, cursor moves with controls uh, would make so as you move the cursor the screen moves relative to that position and keep cursor centered make sure that when you move the cursor the cursor itself stays completely centered in the screen until you get to the edge of the screen. Um, as I said for whatever reason this option isn't doing anything on my system right now it's staying with the cursor pushes contents around. Uh, we then have a lens mode which you can enable and choose whether you want it to be a square, horizontal strip, or vertical strip, which essentially magnifies a part of your screen that your mouse is moving over. So it's almost like a little magnifying glass that moves with your mouse. Next, I want to show you, and this goes with the zoom, uh, the keyboard shortcuts. Of course, you have the, as I mentioned, the mouse wheel where you can select a modifier key and hold that key down and scroll to increase and decrease the zoom but uh, whether you have a trackpad that doesn't support uh, multi-finger scrolling or uh, you have an old mouse that doesn't have a scroll wheel, which I don't think they make those anymore. I think all of them have scroll wheels now. Uh, but for whatever reason, uh, you can enable keyboard shortcuts to increase and to decrease the zoom level. If we go back to the main system settings page, we can then go under the hardware section to keyboard. And from here, we'll click on the shortcuts tab. Now, along the left here in Linux Mint, we've got a universal access, access section. And then we have zoom in and zoom out here right at the top. If you're using GNOME, uh, standard GNOME 3. This keyboard shortcuts page may not be categorized along the left. Instead, all the keyboard shortcuts may be in one long list that just have headings for each of the categories. And so if that's the case, just scroll down through that list until you find the zoom in and zoom out options. They should be under a universal access or accessibility heading. They are in there. You're just going to have to go through a ways. It's, I think, in the bottom half of the list. So what you can do is then click on each of these options, for example, zoom in, and down here we have the set key bindings for it. By default here it's set to Alt Super Equals, so if I hold the Alt key, the Super key, and press the Equals key, it will zoom in. And the Alt Super and Minus key is what I have set to zoom out, as you can see here. So. Um, you can of course set these to whatever you'd like. You just uh, double click on the key binding and you can set it to whatever you want. You can actually set multiple hotkeys. You notice each of these have three bindings down here so you can set a second or third hotkey as well so you have numerous ways of doing the same function. So setting those keyboard shortcuts does make it easy to zoom in and out if you don't want to use uh, the scrolling functionality with the modifier key. And finally, I want to go to a web browser here and show you uh, a feature that's actually built into most web browsers. We'll go to a page with quite a bit of text. Here we go. And I want to show you that um, most web browsers have a built-in zooming feature. Um, it's in Firefox, Chromium, Google Chrome, uh, Opera, Vivaldi, um, and of course if you're not using Linux, um, other proprietary browsers like Internet Explorer or Edge or Safari, just about any web browser available has a similar zooming feature. And the benefit to using a built-in web browsing zoom 
when you're looking at web pages is you'll notice if I use the standard mint or gnome zooming um, while it works to enlarge text if you need the text pretty large you'll find yourself having to scroll back and forth as you read through these lines of text and this can be tedious at best and truly frustrating at worst um, having to scroll back and forth to read through across lines and so these zoom features within web browsers uh, will dynamically arrange and wrap text as you zoom in and out and in the case of most web browsers the hotkeys are the control and equals key and the control and minus key to zoom in and out respectively and on a Mac and Safari or well, any web browser on a Mac, that may be the command equals and command minus keys. Uh, and you'll notice that doing this dynamically zooms the text on this page so that text automatically wraps based on the zoom level, content rearranges, so you can read through uh, without having to slide the viewing area of your magnification back and forth. It wraps the text appropriately based on the zoom level. And most websites, most modern websites these days, uh, support dynamic zooming and arranging like this. So it's a great feature whenever you're viewing content in a web browser. One other alternative to this, if you use Firefox, and this is the main reason that I do use Firefox, is that you have this uh, reader view icon up here which is available on most web pages that have some sort of main section of text and going into reader view uh, essentially strips out all the junk of the web page any ads or uh, uh, additional content and gives you a clean view of just the text and images on the web page and of course along the left you have options to choose your font adjust the font size um, the side margins uh, line spacing and the font and background coloring now this is a Firefox specific feature uh, it comes built in with Firefox and that's why I use Firefox uh, I believe there may be extensions available for Chromium and Google Chrome that give similar functionality. Uh, Safari on the Mac has a similar feature as well. Um, but I mean, if this is something you really want, I do recommend using Firefox. It's a good overall browser, and this is a great feature to have. It just it makes it very easy to uh, read through the main content of a website, the text, any images. Uh, that pertain to the content without all the other clutter of the website getting in the way. Plus it can make the text a bit larger. So I hope you all have found this video helpful. Um, I've certainly enjoyed making it and a lot of these are features that I uh, use on a daily basis as I'm someone that has a visual impairment and I use this uh, screen zooming functionality on a daily basis. And honestly even if you um, don't have severe vision issues, a lot of this is stuff that just makes uh, your overall computing experience a bit experience a bit easier, uh, especially when dealing with a font that may be exceptionally small on the system or a website whose developer gave no respect towards its viewers and gave incredibly small text or poorly contrasting text with the background. Uh, if you enjoyed this video and found it helpful, please leave it a like. If there's anything you would like to say, let me know, have concerns about, or questions, post it in the comments section. I'll do my best to respond to you. I generally check comments once or twice a day. Uh, YouTube's notifications have been lackluster as of late, so I can't rely on getting notifications when people comment, but I do my best to check that at least once or twice a day for comments, and if you haven't already, please subscribe to the channel and click that little notification bell. Hopefully YouTube will cooperate and send you notifications whenever I upload new videos and other content. I appreciate you all watching, and I'll see you in the next video.